Hey gang, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Snowflake Summit 22, live on the show floor at Caesars Forum in Las Vegas. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. A couple of guests joining us to unpack more of what we've been talking about today. George Fraser joins us, the CEO of Fivetran, and Veronica Durgan, the head of data at Saks Fifth Avenue. Guys, welcome to the program. Thank you for having us. Hello. George, talk to us about Fivetran for the audience that may not be super familiar. Talk to us about the company, your vision, your mission, your differentiation, and then maybe the partnership with Snowflake. Well, a lot of people in the audience here at Snowflake Summit probably are familiar with Fivetran. We have almost 2,000 shared customers with them, so a considerable amount of the data that we're all talking about here flows through Fivetran. But in brief, what Fivetran is, is we're a data pipeline, and that means that we uh, go get all the data uh, of your company in all the places that it lives. Uh, so all your, your tools and systems that you use to run your company, we go get that data and we bring it all together in one place, uh, like Snowflake. Uh, and that is the first step in doing anything with data is getting it all in one place. So you have a considerable amount of shared customers. I think I saw this morning on the slide over 5,900, but you're saying you're already at around 2,000 shared customers. Lots of innovation, I'm sure, uh, with between both companies. But talk to us about some of the latest developments at Fivetran in terms of product, in terms of company growth. What's going on? Well, one of the biggest things that happened recently with Fivetran is we acquired uh, another data integration company called HVR. Um, and HVR's specialty uh, has always been replicating the biggest, baddest enterprise databases like Oracle and SQL Server, you know, databases that are enormous, that are uh, run within an inch of their capabilities by their DBAs, and, and HVR was always known as uh, the, the best in the business at that scenario. And, and by bringing that together with Fivetran, we now really have the full spectrum of capabilities. We can replicate all types of data for all sizes of company, and so that's a really exciting development for us and for the industry. So Veronica, head of data at Saks, what does that entail? How do you spend your time? What's your purview? So the cool thing about Saks is a very old company. Saks is the premier luxury e-commerce platform and we help our Saks Fifth Avenue customers you know, just express themselves through fashion. So we're trying to modernize this very old company and we do have the biggest, baddest databases of any flavor you can imagine. So my job is to modernize, to bring us to near real time data, to make sure data is available to all of our users so they can actually take advantage of it. So let's talk about some of those biggest, baddest, you know, hairballs that you've got and how you deal with that. So a lot of, over time, you've built up a lot of data, you've got different data stores. So what are you doing with that and how, what role does Fivetran and Snowflake play in helping you modernize? Yeah, Fivetran helps us ingest data from all of those data sources into Snowflake near real time. It's, it's very important to us and like one of the examples that I give is within a matter of maybe a few weeks, we were able to get data from over a dozen of different data sources into Snowflake in near real time and some of those data sources were not available to our users in the past and everybody was so excited. And the reason they weren't available is because they require a lot of engineering effort to actually build those data pipelines to manage them and maintain them. Well, oh, sorry. Oh, it was just a follow up. So, so Fivetran is kind of the consolidator of all that, that data and that's right. Snowflake we, plays we, that we, role. We as bring well. it all together, and, and the place that it is consolidated is, is Snowflake. And uh, from there, you can really do anything with it. And, and there's really three things you were kind of touching on it that, that make data integration hard. One is volume, uh, and that's the one that people tend to talk about just size of data, and that is important, but it's not the only thing. It's also latency. Um, how fresh is the data in the locus of consolidation? Uh, before Fivetran, the state of the art was. Uh, nightly snapshots, you know, once a day was considered pretty good. Um, and, you know, we consider now once a minute pretty good and we're trying to make it even better. Uh, and then the last uh, challenge, which people then tend not to talk about, it's sort of the dark secret of our industry is just incidental complexity. All of these data sources have a lot of strange behaviors and rules and corner cases. Every data source is a little bit different. And so a lot of what we bring to the table is that we've done the work over 10 years, and in the case of HVR since uh, the 90s, um, to map out all of these little complexities of all these data sources so that as a user, you don't have to see it. You just connect source, connect destination, and that's it. So you don't have to 
do the M word, migrate off of all those databases, you can maybe allow them to, you know, dial them down over time, then create new value with using Fivetran and Snowflake. Is that the right I, way to think about it? Well, Fivetran, like it's, I just want to like, it's, it's incredibly simple. You just connect it to whatever source and in a matter of minutes, you have a pipeline. And I mean, it's like, for us, it's in a matter of minutes. For Fivetran, there's, you know, hundreds of engineers. We're kind of like extending our, you know, data engineering team to now Fivetran. Um, and we can pick and choose which tables we want to, you know, replicate which fields. And once data lands in Snowflake, now we have data across different sources in one place, in central place, and now we can do all kinds of different things. We can integrate data together, we can do validations, we can do reconciliations. We now have ability to do point in time historical kind of journey. In the past in the transactional system, you don't see that. You only see data that's right now. But now that we replicate everything to Snowflake, and Snowflake being so powerful as an analytical platform, we can do, you know, what did it look like two months ago? Uh, what did it look like two years ago? So you've got all that time series data. Okay. And to address you know, that word you mentioned a moment ago, <laughs> migrate, um, this is something people often get confused about. What we're talking about here is not a migration. Right. Uh, these, these source systems are not going away. You know, These databases are the systems powering sax.com and they're staying right there. They're the systems you interact with when you place an order on the site. Um, the purpose of our tool and the whole stack that Veronica has uh, put together is to serve other workloads in Snowflake that need to have access to all of the data together. But if you didn't have Snowflake, you would have to push those other data stores, and have, try to have them do things that they're, they have sometimes a tough time doing. Yeah. Okay. And you can't, so. you can't run analytical workloads, you cannot do reporting on the transactional database, it's not meant for that. It's supporting capability of an application, and it's configured to be optimized for that. So we, we always had to offload that those specific analytical reporting functionality or machine learning somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And Snowflake is, is excellent for that, it's meant for yeah. that. Yeah. What was, I was going to ask you what you were doing before you just answered that, what was the aha moment for realizing you needed to work with the power of Fivetran and Snowflake? If we look at, you talked about, you know, Saks being a, a legacy history company that's obviously been very successful at transforming into the digital age, but what was that one thing as the head of the day that this is it? Great question. Um, I've worked with Fivetran in the past. This is my third company, same with Snowflake. I actually brought Fivetran into two companies at this point. So my, my first my first experience with both Fivetran and Snowflake was this like, this is where I want to be. Like th this is this is the stack and the tooling and just the engineering behind it. So as as I moved on to the next company, that that was you know I I'm bringing tools you know with me. So. That was kind of like part. And the other thing I want to mention, like when we look, when we evaluate tools for a new platform, we kind of look at things in, in like three dimensions, right? One, one we're, we're cloud first. We want to have native, you know, cloud native tools, and they have to be modular, but we also don't want to have too many tools. So Fivetran certainly checks that off. They're, you know, cloud first, cloud native, and they also have a very long list of connectors. The other thing is for us, it, it's very important that you know, data engineering effort is spent on actually analyzing data, not building pipelines, and supporting infrastructure. And Fivetran, you know, reliable, it's secure, it has various connectors, so it checks off that box as well. And another thing is that we're looking for companies we can partner with, so companies that help us grow and grow with us. We're looking at company culture, their maturity, how they treat their customers, and how they innovate. And again, Fivetran checks off that box as well. And I imagine Snowflake does as well. Frank Slootman on stage this morning talked about mission alignment. And it seemed to me like, wow, one of the missions of Snowflake is to align with its customers' missions. It sounds like from the conversations that Dave and I have had today, that it's the same with partners, but it sounds like you have that cultural alignment with Fivetran and Snowflake. Oh, absolutely. And, and Fivetran has that with Obviously with 2,000 shared customers. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, well not quite there yet, but we're close. Uh, <laughs> I think that um, you know, the most important way that we've always been aligned with our customers is that we've been very clear on what we do and don't do. And 
that, that our job is to get the data from here to there, that the data be accurately replicated, which means in practice I often joke that it is exactly as messed up as it was in the source, no better and no worse. But we really will accomplish that task. Uh, you do not need to uh, worry about that. You can well and fully delegate it to us. But then what you do with the data, um, you know, we don't claim that we're going to solve that problem for you. That's up to you. And, and anyone who claims that they're going to solve that problem for you, uh, you should be very skeptical. So how do, how do you solve that problem? You have Well, that's where modeling comes in, right? Like you get data from point A to b point B and it's like, you know, bet in, bet out. Like that's it and that's where, you know, we, we do those reconciliations and that's where we model our data. We actually try to understand what our business is, how our, you know, users, how they talk about data, how they talk about business and, you know, that's where data warehouse is important and in our case it's data vault. Talk to me a little bit before we wrap here about the, the, the benefits to the end user, the, the consumer. Say I'm on Saks.com, I'm looking for a particular item. What is it about this foundation that Saks has built with 5chan and with Snowflake that's empowering me as a consumer to be able to get, find what I want, get it, get the transaction done like that? So getting access to like, our, our end goal is to you know help our customers, right? Make their experience, you know, beautiful, luxurious, we want to make sure that what we put in front of you is what you're looking for, so you can actually make that purchase and you're happy with it. So having that data, having that data coming from various different sources into one place, enables us to do, do that near real-time analytics, so we can help you as a customer to find what you're looking for. Magic on the back end, delighting so customers. So the world is kind of still messed up, right? I mean, airlines are out of whack, uh, there's supply imbalances, You've got the situation in Ukraine with oil prices, the Fed kind of missed the mark. So can data solve these problems? I mean, have, you know, if you think about the context of the macro environment and you bring it down to what you're seeing at Saks, with your relationship with Fivetran and with Snowflake, do you, do you see the light at the end of that confusion tunnel? Uh, that's such a great question, very philosophical. I don't think data can solve it. It's the people looking at data and working together that can solve it. I think data can help. You know, data can't stop a war. Um, but data can help you forecast supply chain misses and, and mitigate those problems, so data can help. Mm -hmm. It can be a facilitator. It can what? be a facilitator. Yeah, it can be a facilitator of uh, you know whatever whatever you end up doing with it. it. Data can be used for good or evil. It's ultimately it's a tool, up to the right? user. Like, yeah. it's a, do you bring a hammer to a gunfight? No, but it, it's a tool in the right hands. You know, for the right purpose, it can definitely help. So you have this great foundation. You're able to delight customers as, especially from a luxury brand perspective. I imagine that luxury customers have high expectations. What's next for Saks from a data perspective? Well, we want to first and foremost to modernize our data platform. We want to make sure we actually bring that near real-time data to our customers. We want to make sure data is reliable, that well understood that we do the you know data engineering and the modeling behind the scenes so that people that are using our data can rely on it. Because it's like, you know, there is bad data is bad data, but we want to make sure it's very clear. And what's next? I mean, the sky's the limit. Is, is your, can you describe your data team, teams? Is it highly centralized? What's your philosophy in terms of the, the, the architecture of the organization? So right now we're starting with a centralized team. It just works for us mm -hmm. as we're trying to rebuild our platform and modernize it. But as we become more mature, we establish you know, our practices, our data governance, our definitions, then I, I see a future where we kind of like decentralize a little bit and actually each team has their own you know, analytical function or potentially data engineering function as well. That'll be an this interesting discussion the, when you get there. Yeah, that's okay. a hot topic. Yeah. It's one of the hardest problems in building a data team is uh, whether to centralize or decentralize. We're still centralized at Fivetran, but the company's now over a thousand people and we're starting to feel the strain of that. And yeah. inevitably you eventually have to find a way to find seams and, and create specialization. You just have to be fluid, right? And then go with the company as the company grows and things change. Yeah, I mean, I've worked with some companies. I mean, JPMC is here. They've got a little kind of, I'll call it a skunk works. They're probably, that probably understates what they're doing, but they're testing that out. Uh, a company like HelloFresh is doing some things because they, you know, their Hadoop cluster just couldn't scale. So they have to begin to decentralize. It is a hot topic these days. And you know, I'm not sure there's a right or a wrong. It's really a situational 
Uh, but I think in a lot of situations, it's maybe a, the trend. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I think centralized versus decentralized technology is a different question than centralized versus decentralized teams. Yes. They're both valid, but they're very different. And sometimes people conflate them, and that's very dangerous um, because you might want one to be centralized and the other to be decentralized. Well, it's true, and I think a lot of folks look at a centralized team and say, hey, it's more efficient to have these specialized roles, but at the same time, what's the, what's the outcome? If the outcome can be optimized and it's maybe a little bit more ex people expensive or I, I don't know, it, and they're in the lines of business where there's data context, that might be a, a better solution. For a company. So, I mean, to truly understand the value of data, you have to specialize in that specific area. So I, I see people kind of like deep diving into specific, you know, vertical or whatever that is, and truly understanding what data they have and how to take advantage of it. Well, all this talk about monetization and building data products, I mean, you're there, right? Yeah. You're, you're on the cusp of that. And so who's going to build those data products? It's going to be somebody in the business. Do they, today they don't, quote unquote, own the life cycle of the data. They don't feel responsible for it, but they complain when it's not what they want. And so I, I, I feel as though what Snowflake is doing is, is actually attacking some of those problems. I mean, not 100% not there, obviously, but a lot of work to do, but. You know, great analysts are great navigators of organizations amongst other things. And one of the best things that's happened as part of this evolution from technology like Hadoop to technology like Snowflake is the new, the new stack is a lot simpler. Uh, there's a lot uh, less technical knowledge that you need. You still need technical knowledge, but not nearly what you used to. And that has made it accessible to more people, people who bring different skills to the table. And in many cases, those are the skills you really need to deliver value from data. Is not, you know, do you know the inner workings of HDFS, um, but do you know how to uh, extract from your constituents in the organization a precise version of the question <laughs> that they're trying right. to ask? We really want them spending their time. The, the technical infrastructure is an operational detail. Right. You know, where, so you can put your teams on, on those types of questions, not how do we make it work? And that's kind of what Hadoop was. Hey, we got it to work. And that's something we're obsessed with. We're always trying to hide the technical complexities of the problem of data centralization behind the scenes. Right. Even if it's harder for us, even if it's more expensive for us, we will pay any costs so that you don't have to see it. Uh, because that allows our customers to focus on more uh, high impact. Well, this is a problems. case where a technology vendor's R&D is making your life you know, easier. Easier, you, I right. would presume you'd rather spend money to s save time than spend your time to save engineering time to save money. That's true, and I mean, at the end of the day, hiring you know, three data engineers to do custom work that a tool does, it's actually not saving money. It costs more in the end. Right. But to your point, pulling business people into those data teams gives them ownership, and they feel like they're part of the solution, and it's such a, such a great feeling, so that it, they're excited to contribute, they're excited to help us. Mm. So I, I love where the industry is going, like in that direction. Yeah, and of so. course, that's the theme of the show: the world around data collaboration is absolutely critical. Guys, thank you so much for joining Dave and me, talking about Five Trans Snowflake together. What you're doing to empower stacks to be a data company. I'm going to absolutely have a different perspective next time I shop there. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the Cube live from Snowflake Summit 22 from Vegas. Stick around. Our next guest joins us momentarily.